welcome to our top games of August 2023. We seem to do it later and later during the month. And by the way, I'm Stella and this is Taryn from Mibu University. Hope you are well. Please also let us know what is your top game or games in this month. Yes, it's really starting to ramp up. Of course, the month began with Gen Con. So a lot of Gen Con releases yeah. uh, were under consideration for this particular month. But there are so many games that we can play because we have lots of games. We play multiple games, so multiple times per game. So there are only so much that we can do and play. Yep, so if your favorite Gen Con release was not featured here, maybe it'll be next month, maybe the month after. I can see a lot of them in a pile over there. <laughs> the um, this, as usual, is new to us games for the month. It could include games we're commissioned to do. It could include prototypes. Uh, it will. It's all about what is new to us. Yes, and number five is Inside Job. For you. For me. This is really close with another game, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say that game. You mention it, but you can't say that they're even or expand your five to six. Not allowed. <laughs> oh no! Uh, the White Castle is the other one, by the way. Anyways, inside job. This is like the crew, but with spy. Ding ding ding. Ding 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 ding. ding. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's just like a cue when I hear something. There's music playing in my head, and Terrence apparently the same. As crazy as I am, I'm glad. <laughs> crazy couple. So inside job was, a, I believe, a Gen Con release. I definitely picked it up at Gen Con. And this has got that trick-taking mechanic. It's almost cooperative. So we're trying to complete missions after missions, but one of you is the spy, or it's called insider. Yes. So in the basic game. And then there's like different roles as well in the advanced game. And this is really fun. I played with the non-basic roles as well. And I think after playing a few times with the basic roles, the advanced roles make it even more fun. Yeah. I love it because it, I love the crew and hence this one was like, ooh, the, like the crew but with Spy. You've probably heard of this one beforehand because it would have been in the Gen Con vlog and the previous videos. So here it is. It is returning and is one of my favorite games of this month. Mainly, I love it because it's the crew and then we have to figure out the spy and there's a few other mechanics as well in it. So if the, the spy needs to get a certain number of the winning tokens, if they, they win missions, then they got this, what is it, that brief, briefcase token? The intel, yeah. Intel, so it doesn't, yes. it's not, um, <clears throat> it doesn't have that pure de um, trick-taking style where you've got the single trump and you fully card count everything. Every one of the tricks has an objective, which is how you want to play the trick as well as a winner. Mm. And you're trying to, the insider's trying to win as many as possible while the team is trying to make as many of them meet the objective as possible. Yes. And as those things intersect, you try to work out who's who. It plays three to five players, but it has two player variants. And we do have the how to play video in our channel. So if we have any other videos with the game that we talk about, we definitely will link it below in the description. And that's Inside Job. My number five is the fourth game in the Forbidden series. We're back in tins. I think Forbidden Sky was... Don't uh, do that. It's like, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, it's a little harder than I expected. <laughs> I think Forbidden Sky was in a box, but we're back in tins. So this is Forbidden Jungle, Matt Leacock. And it's very much in the style of the other Forbiddens, which is... Uh, it's also got that pandemic style, so very familiar four action points per turn, things are going to escalate on you, you just start drawing more cards as it escalates. You know what you'll get out of this sort of game. But there's always something unique about each one in the series. Yeah, so this one has an interesting slide puzzle mechanism. Uh, you will set up the tiles in some sort of a pattern and you have to find a portal and you have to find... Uh, there are six crystal tiles and four of them are functioning crystals. And then you've got various tiles where when you activate them allows you to shift other tiles around. Slight that, puzzle. Yeah, so that will let you move the nasties away from you. It will let you move the crystals into place. And you've got to try to work out the most optimal way to do that. Uh, things escalate pretty quickly on you. You can uh, oh. you can go from <laughs> alive to death pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. 
because there's so uh, many times it's, yeah. it's pretty hard to win <laughs> yeah if you don't have the healer it is quite tough to heal so you've got to be really careful mm -hmm. take a few risks but it is yeah it, it's another good addition to this series i think i like the way you can you know you can card count the sorts of things that might come out of the um, out of the attack deck so you can make some careful decisions there but I just, I just think it's very cool having that option to slide things out of the Yeah, <laughs> out of danger or into danger sometimes. Yep. yep, the tiles will collapse as the game goes on as well. So that Same. both creates space for you to slide puzzle things through. Oh, you but lose You've also got to be careful. Tiles. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's so fun. Yeah. Number four is Disney Locana. This one was definitely a Gen Con released. And this is a, a trading. Few people might have got it there. <laughs> A few people got it there, yeah, for sure. Uh, they sold out and it is sold out now. And it's not even in Australia yet. I can't even top up my deck, even if I want to. Can I? I don't think you can. I don't think I can. I mean, not yet. So this is available in America and I believe it is already sold out as we speak at the moment in America. I don't know where else people can get it. Maybe UK, there are a few releases around the world. So uh, even the online one is sold out the one mm. at Disney, shopdisney.com. Yeah. So this is all kind of, it's a trading card game and you collect them, you can get booster packs and so on. And this is based on Disney. So all the characters in Disney and it feels a little bit like Magic Card, but it's not just playing two players. It plays up to whatever, really. Probably, a, yeah. you probably don't want to go more than six, maybe. It'll be a little bit more chaotic, unless if you want chaotic and mm -hmm. if you are professional players anyways so play two players usually and it has got this mechanic like similar mechanic probably that you expect kind of like a magic-ish game you tap the card but what i love about it the most is that it's not tapping like every card almost every card can be used as your mana to actually pay for other cards or you can use it for to have it played so multi-use cards in this sort of thing is great Yep. And you don't have a limit, like you have minimum of 60 cards. So you can just get whatever you want, but it will dilute your cards. But you can only have four of the same cards in the deck. Yep. And you can play one or two colors. So you can see that there's like six different decks. So there's like two different ones here. You can use one as long as it's 60 and so on. It's like the different strategies, different things that you can do. And it's definitely a fun one. Uh, you're going to say something? Yeah, I think what makes it um, clever and a bit more of a good entry point to uh, the, I was gonna say the that. battle sort of card game as well is that it's not all about Killing battling opponents. and attacking your yep. opponent. It's about finding cards that give you lore yeah. and building them up. But then when you spend them to gain lore, that puts them at risk of being attacked. Yes. So that is, yeah, exactly that's what the other things I love about it. It's not just about attacking. It's about collecting points. So that's Disney Locana. Did you get it? Did you play it? Please let me know if you get it and if you like it as well. If you don't like it, that's fun too. Not every game so for everyone. My number four from the month was Forest Shuffle. This was another Gen Con release, I believe. Am I correct? Uh, I think it's Essence or limited release at Gen Con okay. might be here. Yep, so this is a... It's got a bit of, we were very big on Arceus Society earlier in the year, and it's got a little bit of that vibe in the card play sort of thing. Definitely. It's essentially a big, it's a big, pretty solitary tableau builder, and you're building up trees and then putting creatures and mushrooms and things into those trees and trying to build up combinations with score points. And the way you do it has that Arceus Society ethnos kind of vibe about it, where you're either, you can draw cards and you can draw them from a face-up display, and then when you play them, you don't have to get rid of your whole hand like you do in those, but you have to pay by putting some of your cards from your hand into the common display. So that's kind of where it has that vibe. Um, I think you know, it is pretty solitary, but it's got a lot of different cards and combos, and it's enough to keep... Like, there's 14 reference cards, each of which has, I think, three of its three different creatures or three different things on it to clarify how they work. So there's lots and lots of different lots. cards for combinations. And I think that's what makes it, uh, it's what makes it fun. It's what makes it interesting for your own personal puzzle. And then it also has that uh, immediate end mechanism that Arceus Society has. 
cards will come out and in the bottom part there is winter three something. winter cards yeah. and as soon as the third one comes out it ends immediately so you've got to um, dissipate that <laughs> yeah you've got to be like all right am i trying to save up for my big combo or do i just have to make it happen now so yeah it's it's clever it's fun and whether we have released it or not we have for Shuffle How to Play video. Now, the How to Play video, not just the How to Play, but also understanding on the type of cards, what will come out and that sort of thing. So it's probably a little bit long than you expect, but uh, it's that, okay, you're not just playing, you, you don't really just explaining how you play cards in where and how, but also the context of it. So uh, check that out, I'll link it below. And before we get to the next one, if you could please, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and comments and subscribe if you see what more is coming. I would really appreciate that a lot. And onto my next game. So actually, why are you putting it down, Karen? <laughs> to, to misdirect people. <laughs> misdirect. If they saw me still holding it, they'd know it was your Oh yeah, okay. did you get misdirected by Taryn? Mm. Let me know. <laughs> First shovel is my next one, which is my number three. Uh, what Taryn said, I love about it, is that multi-use card especially where you you know you have to pay for certain cards to put in your tableau and you have to pay it onto the the pile that everyone else can take so i was like i want to keep everything you can't really keep everything in this game you have to discard cards and then other people can get it so you're kind of like oh i want to discard this so no one else can get it because they're collecting this like this one mm -hmm. for example butterfly you collect the more you have the more points you have, that sort of thing. And then at one game, it's the person before my turns also collects butterflies. I'm like, oh, hold the butterfly, jam you. So I tried to collect something else. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, what we haven't even mentioned, you mentioned multi-use cards. Other than the trees, all the cards are split in two halves. Yes. And when you get it, you decide whether you're going to put it in the top or a bottom or in the left or a right, depending on which way the card is split. Mm -hmm. So yes. again, you, you sometimes... You've got both the things you want, but they're on the same card and you've got to make choices. And it's also the more you play it, the faster the game is and then you get familiarized with the icons in the game because it's kind of like a lot of information. And then once you play it as well, and in the next game, the next game, and then you kind of like know what to expect or at least you know there's a card that can, you can put in the top of the tree or bottom of the tree uh bats that combo each other or mm. things that will give you extra benefit if you play this card and they are how many different type of trees for example so that is you know just like it's a gorgeous gorgeous game gorgeous artwork as well i would recommend it for tableau building and art nature type of game and one more thing is that this, look at, this is by Lookout Games. It has got green lines. So they have the green line symbol on the box. That means that it's kind of like more nature, environment friendly games. Like plastic free in yes, particular. Yes, and things like that. So check it out for a shuffle. Every day I'm shuffling. My number three for August is the third in the Great Western Trail series, Great Western Trail New Zealand. So this is, I think we've enjoyed Great Western Trail throughout its existence and throughout the new version and then Argentina and now New Zealand. So this is probably, this is my second favourite, I think, in, the, the, Great Western in Trail. the trilogy. Mm -hmm. Certainly, I don't, it's probably pretty much on par with the original, I think. Um, I, Argentina is my favourite. This is still a great game. It adds more of a, I think, a traditional Euro sort of feel to the game. Uh, it gives you, rather than just having that single railway track, it's got some uh, different paths you can go on. You've got a, a few more options than I think you're used to from the original game. And a bit of more traditional deck building as well. So it's kind of nice to have those extra options. I feel like you get a bit more money in this game as well. So you have a, you have a less tight experience than the original game. And a bit of latitude to go out and try things. So I think that is... I think that's a comparison with the original rather than necessarily reasons why it's better. I, I, I think there's similar levels of game, but it's still a very good game as it always has been. So, yep, my number three for August, Great Western Trail. Great well. game. My number two game is not here right now. It is Last Light by Roy Kennedy and Grey Fox Games. This is a 4X game. It's not usually something that I would go to to play. But, oh, I know Roy from the Dice Tower, 
and it's, it's got nothing to do with the fact that I know Roy, but this 4X games goes really quick because everyone does their turn simultaneously. So everyone will pick a card, you put the card, it's almost like has got also the Concordia mechanics and you pick up the cards if you want to as one of the actions. So basically everyone chooses their actions at the same time and then it gets resolved from certain orders and then everyone's do the actions and then goes to the next round. And the other thing that is unique is that the fact that um, every so now and then, the so it's a 4S, it's got rotating pla so it's planets. So every now and then it's rotate. So the position of your ship, position of opponent ship will change from round to round. So that is like amazing. It's like you have to like think about where your position is going to be and then it's going to be a good one. Um, and essentially you need to get to the center to get lots of points. So with this moving around and the fact that you can attack other people like other 4X, that is, that is unique, that is quick, that is amazing. And I love it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this game is amazing. It's so quick and it's not, I'm, I'm a bit too ginger sometimes with 4X and that's okay. And you can building up your things without, you know, you're trying to avoid attacking people as long as you get to the center, but then other people might attack you. That's okay too. And there's one other unique mechanics that I like, which is you can help your neighbor. There's action that you can actually, you gain points and then you, it's kind of like shared incentive. Well, not really, like everyone's benefiting from it and you get to give a resource to your neighbor. Like, sweet. It's nice, it's slightly friendly. It's like 4X that also give resources to your neighbor. Like what? And that is like last light. So uh, did you back it? Did you, um, are you, did you get it from Gen Con? Because it's sold out. Every day they have certain amounts of games they sell and they sold out every single day. So uh, really, really recommended that. Highly recommended it. It's, you know, even though if you don't, don't like 4X, just, just have a look, just give it a go. Maybe you, you'll find something new here and refreshing and great. My number two for August is this little small box game here, Rubber Paper Scissors. And it's it's a very it's a very easy game. It's probably the easiest game from a complexity standpoint that I've had in any of these countdowns. <laughs> but you know, games you that come in party. all. You have a party. You have a bunch of party. That's also easy. That was on the easy side, yeah. Thank you. But you know, games come in all difficulties, complexities. But if they've got a clever hook, that's what makes them good. And this one here, rubber paper scissors. It is a little set collecting game essentially that with a rock paper scissors engine. So there's a grid, and on each grid there is a face-up tile, a face-down tile, and the space itself. You rock, paper, scissors, we do <laughs> that incorrectly. Whoever gets, whoever wins it, chooses first. Then whoever loses it, chooses second. And whoever wins it is left with or stuck with whatever's third. Mm -hmm. And... Across the course of the game, you're trying to build up sets of different uh, different collections, different icons. But as you build up those sets, the first one is worth a little bit, the second one is worth a bit, then you get a big step up for the third one, then the fourth <laughs> one you lose points, and the fifth one you gain a lot of points. So you it's can a lot of force, your luck, yeah. Yeah, you can force your opponents to get other things. You're trying to make three in a row on the grid, so that becomes a really critical part of the game. Mm -hmm. And there's also uh, an instant win collection that you can do as well. If you if you get <laughs> three crowns. crowns, then you instantly win. And so there's just enough of these little clever ways that you can lose points by uh, getting forced into something you don't want to make it a really clever little uh, clever little game. It plays in five to ten minutes. Very portable. Very clever. Um, yeah. I quite enjoy it as well, except that Terrence can win. <laughs> It's not just about like Karen's keep winning the rock paper scissors bit, but it's just like this strategy. It's just a bit of a strategy, I swear. This, this, you know, the collecting thing. It's like, oh, I should have gone for this, this tic tac toe mechanic as well. It's fun. Yes. So, no, very, very clever little small box game. Great stocking stuff for coming into Christmas. <laughs> um, I recommend. Great Western Trail in New Zealand is back, everyone. This is my number one of the month and also my most favorite out of the Great Western Trail series ever being made. Ever, ever, ever. Yes. Well, there's only three. There are only three. Take that rails to the north. <laughs> Sorry, rails to the north. So yeah. why I love this, like, I'm just going on what Taryn said, what I love most about it is the deck 
building elements are so good so the twist of the deck building you don't really kind of like discard this it's actually hard to discard cards but when you take that card you actually get to draw another card to replace that deck building so like you can just combo it like okay i get coins i get actions i get coins i get something else it's amazing and um it's probably the kind of like the opposite of what taryn likes is that money is easier <laughs> so I like that in this sort of game. It's like, okay, I get money. And that deck building is like gives me more and more money and points. And there's a track as well. There's the ship ship part of it. So that's why. I'm not going to talk much more about it from what Taryn already said. Great Western Trail in New Zealand. Highly recommend it. And it's New Zealand. It's basically Australian. <laughs> there it is. And finally, we go to my favorite of the month. Sweet Mess Pastry Competition. Now. <laughs> now, you thought, you thought last month I had a controversial Kickstarter in here with, uh, with Farms Race. <laughs> this is Sweet, Sweet Mess, notorious uh, Kickstarter that uh, simply wasn't fulfilled yep. by the original publisher, but it's been picked up by Fantasia Games now. We haven't actually got, we backed it, and then we haven't got our copies yet for mm. the one that we backed. Yeah. But this so, is for different purposes. This is yes. for our how to play. Yeah, so after a very long time in limbo, it was picked up by a different publisher and they've brought it to fulfillment and release. And it's developed good. Developed it. And developed it. And yeah. it's good that they did. It is a clever, it's a really clever game. And, you know, on the surface, it just looks like a simple contract fulfillment game. And that's, you know, that's not a style of game that typically excites me. I get resource, I find resources efficiently, I spend them on the contracts and that's kind of all it is. But this has a couple of really clever little extra hooks. One of them, which I don't believe I've seen anywhere else, is your storage limitations. So I'm relatively used to you can hold X amount of resources, resources. but in this one you've got different combinations you can hold. You've got one column that can hold four different resources. You've got one column that can hold up to four of the same, and you've got one column that can hold up to two pairs of different. And as you're trying to gain resources efficiently and complete contracts efficiently, uh, that is relatively restrictive, and it's really clever in that way. Very puzzly. Yeah, I quite like that one as well. I was like, oh no, I can't really work out the puzzling. I can't really take that resources. I don't want that person to have that resources anyway. Yeah. And then it's also a really tight, efficient race. So you're trying to race to get awards. So each of the contracts has a type of pastry on it. And as you get combinations of those, you can get awards. And the value of them goes down. And the faster you get them, the more you'll have them. But every time you make a recipe, you can choose to take longer for it to be available for those awards by getting better rewards and engine building stuff on your playboard uh, on your player board instead so there's this big balance between those two things mm. that you've got to manage and it's it's a tight little efficient thing and it's yeah it's very clever i like it i also love that engine building thing where you can build your it's like almost like splendor in the mm. way where you know if you have things you can fit into a jar and then that means that you have that permanent resources like sweet so there we go, sweet mess. And have you Pastry been enjoying? Thank you. Have you been enjoying any of these games? Please let us know. Or as I say, share us your favorite games of this month. And hopefully you've been doing great. You have a great day, great weekend. And we'll see you next time. Bye.